I'm Krista Jacobson, headmistress of the Buddha Dini Tsu Dojo, and today I'm going to tackle the question, what is the Buddha Dio? The Buddha Dio was established by myself in 2004, and its primary focus is on traditional samurai warfare. We teach authentic ninjutsu and traditional samurai bujutsu. The Buddha Dio translates out as School of the Warrior Way, and it has its basis or fundamental teachings in what we call the Nanamusha Den, or the Seven Warrior Traditions. The seven warrior traditions of the Buddha Ryu are Tomoru Shinobi Jutsu, Kokoru Kenpo, Tenjin Ryu Jutsu, Eishin Ryu Iai Jutsu, Kotoru Kopo Jutsu, Gyoko Ryu Koshi Jutsu, and Togaku Ryu Nimpo Tai Jutsu. I get this question all the time. What is the Buddha Ryu? How is it different from other schools? How are you guys compared to this school? How are you guys compared to that school? Honestly, I don't think you can really compare schools. I think what you do is you, you write down what it is that you're looking for, and then you try to find a school that can give you what you're looking for. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tackle that question. I'm going to talk to you guys today about the Budo Ryu Goho no Keiko. Now, the Budo Ryu Goho no Keiko are the five areas of training that we have here at the Budo Ryu. And if you guys can understand the five areas of training, then that will give you at least a general sense of what it is that we do, why we do what we do, how we do what we do, and kind of the higher essence of what we stand for as a martial arts school. Now the five areas of the Buddha Ryu Goho no Keiko are the Nanamusha Den, which means seven warrior traditions, Gendai Hinka Waza, which means modern changing technique, Seshi Teki Kyoyo, which is spiritual refinement, Hojo and Do, which means supplemental exercise or, or physical conditioning, and Nihon Mushukyu, which means the study of the Japanese warrior. I'm going to go over each one of these independently so you guys can get a better understanding of what we do. The first one, Nanamusha Den. These are the seven warrior traditions. As an apprentice, I learned many martial arts growing up, and I, I, what I wanted to do was get away from all the organizational, political crap that we see in the martial arts industry. I mean, it's like if you align yourself with this school, then you got to deal with that. If you align yourself with this organization, then you got to deal with that. It's like you have to choose sides. I got so damn tired of it, you know? And I, I took a step back and I said, you know, I'm going to create my own school so I don't have to deal with all this. And um, I'm going to make it to where students can come into the dojo and they can learn the arts that I learned as an apprentice, and then they can apply it to their life. No political ties, no organizational crap, just they come in, they train, and then they learn that way, that warrior way, and they apply that to their journey in life. And um, that was the reason why I established the Buddha Dio in the first place, is to be able to, to give people an opportunity to do that, you know? So I talked to all of my teachers, and um, I said, this is, this is my goal, this is what I would like to do, do I have your blessing? All of them said, yes, Krista, you have our blessing. We would love for you to do this. So I sat down and I thought, what were the arts that helped me become the woman that I am today? What were the arts that I felt best embodied myself as a person, as a martial artist, as a teacher, and that I can share that with my students? And that's where we come up with the Nanamusha Den of the Seven Warrior Traditions. These Seven Warrior Traditions... Uh, Kokoro Kenpo, Tenjin Ryu Jiu Jitsu, Tomoru Shinobi Jitsu, Eishin Ryu Iai Jitsu, Kotoru Kopo Jitsu, Gyokuru Koshi Jitsu, and Togaku Ryu Nenpo Tai Jitsu. You know, these seven traditions is the foundation and the fundamental practice of our school. Now, what, I'm not going to go over the history and tradition of each one of these seven arts, because that's not for this video. This video is to talk about the Budo Ryu Goho no Keiko, or the five areas of training. So if you want to learn about the history and tradition of these seven arts that we teach, please go to our official website at www.budoryuninjutsu.com and on the left hand side you'll see where it says seven warrior traditions. Click that and you'll have seven links and you can go through each page and you can read the history if you'd like. What I think is important is to understand that these are the seven arts that we focus on. These are the seven warrior traditions of the school and that is the first step of the Budo Ryu Goho no Keiko or the five areas of training. Step one is to train in the Nanamusha Den which means the seven warrior traditions. Step two means Gendai Henka Waza. This is where I got a lot of the traditional schools that um, tend to give me a lot of static and a lot of resistance. I understand learning the old way. Nobody loves a tradition more than I do. I love the history, I love the traditions, I love the kudin, I love the research, all that kind of stuff. But the raw reality is nobody walks in the door 
to say, hey, I want to learn the art of uh, ninjutsu and samurai bujutsu, but I don't want to learn how to protect myself. I don't want to learn how to make these techniques and philosophies, strategies, and principles work in the time today. I just want to learn how to make some form of a torch that I will never use in my life. That's not typically what people want when they walk into the dojo. They want to learn the traditional ninjutsu. They want to learn traditional samurai bujutsu. But they want to take something and have it be more than just a piece of knowledge. They want it to have worth. They want it to have some sort of a weight on their life to where they can take it and apply it to their life outside of the dojo. So the next section of training is called Gendai Hinko Waza. And that means modern changing technique. And uh, this is where every student learns the traditional technique from the Nanamusha Den, and then they learn the Hinka of the traditional techniques. So they learn how these old samurai and ninja did a specific move, a specific technique, um, and take that technique and then modify it or change it to fit the modern day. And learning these modern methods of empty handed fighting, um, of weaponry, strategies, and principles. This is a very important and crucial part of the Budo Dini Dojo. The third area of training is Hojo and Do. Now that translates out as supplemental exercise, but what it means is physical conditioning. This is a, another major part of our school. So this is where you're going to do weight training, you're going to do resistance training, you're going to do cardiovascular training, you're going to do lots of bag work where you're punching and kicking bags, trees, rocks. You know, the last thing you want to do is do a bunch of bullshit martial arts in the air and punch and kick the air. Never actually hit somebody. Never actually hit a moving target. And then the time that you actually have to punch somebody, they move on you. And when you hit, you don't have the strength in your fist and your wrist and your forearms to when you hit something that you actually break your own wrist, you break your hand. Because when they move, maybe your wrist moves on you because you don't have the strength and the stabilizing muscles and conditioning muscles, connective tissue, to actually execute a punch. Because all you do is punch the air or punch some nice cute little target where people handhold them for you, you know. So we're really big on Hojo and Do. Now, of course, there are schools that pretend that, you know, sparring is not a big deal. I live in a world of reality. The reality is when you get in a street fight, People like to say, oh, there's knives and guns and this and this and oh, oh, it's so deadly. That's true, and I agree. When you get in a street fight, you're going to get your ass whooped, and you are going to feel pain. And I think it's completely immature of any martial art teacher to not implement sparring into the program because you will feel pain, and you will have to do your martial training while feeling pain. That is a fact. You're going to get your ass kicked. You're going to feel pain. Nobody, and, and at that moment... When someone's grabbing you by the throat, when they're trying to beat you up, can, are you conditioned to feel that pain, overcome what it is that they're doing, and then show the technique of the martial way that you have learned and overcome that pain, push through, endure, and keep moving forward? Now, of course, people like to tell you a bunch of bullshit, and they like to say, oh, no, do this technique, and you pinch their pinky, and whatever, and it's all a bunch of theory. And you can tell when you've got a bunch of overweight instructors that can't even do their own push-ups, sit-ups, and squats, but they'll make everybody else do it, of course. You can tell real quick where that is. The raw reality is, in a real fight, bottom line, you will have anxiety, you will have fear, and you will have pain. Those three things will happen in a real encounter. That is a fact. We can't get away from that. And the only way to prepare a student to actually be able to defend themselves and protect the ones they love is to implement anxiety, fear, and pain into the program. And the way we do that is hojo and do. We make them lift weights. Now you're like, well, why would you make them lift weights? How do they do that? Because when you lift weights and you're lifting the weight here and you lift the weight here and you're doing squats and you're doing these exercises, you know, of course, you're building muscle and burning fat and blah, blah, blah. But what you're doing is you're teaching your body that you have to do two more reps. You have to keep going even though you feel pain. So although, yes, it works the muscles, but it has a secondary effect. It teaches you that I have to do three more without stopping. I have to push myself beyond that level that I think I can go. So... It's crucial part of training to implement this in. And I see so many schools, they don't make their students feel pain, they don't have anxiety and fear in their class, and then they give them black belts, and it's... it's I mean, 
you know what? I'm going to stop there because I'm trying to not be biased and tell you what we do instead of comparing ourselves to other schools. So in the sake of um, pissing off 90% of the martial art world, which, honest to God, it is 90% of the martial art world, um, then I'm just going to say here at the Budo Do Yunin Jitsu Dojo, one of the areas of training is Hojo Wando. Um, believe it or not, you will have to get in shape. You will have to do calisthenics. Um, you will have to spar. Um, you will have to do grappling matches and throwing matches and sparring matches. You'll be doing sparring with various different kinds of weaponry. Um, we do firearms training, firearm defense, blade, bladed weapon defense. All of this, multiple attacker situations, all of this gets implemented into training. This is physical conditioning. Um, they will really they will really punch you, they will really kick you, you will feel pain, and you will have to endure and overcome. This is one of the areas of training. The fourth area of training that we have at the Buddha Do Ninja Dojo is called Seshi Teki Kyoyo, and this means spiritual refinement. Now, what this is, it's not religion. People get this mixed up with religion, like, oh, let me um, do some form of a, a mantra, and then I feel enlightened. Seshi Teki Kyoyo is getting in touch with nature, the, the elements, earth, wind, water, fire, and void. Understanding different breathing techniques, understanding different methodologies of um, channeling your energy, whether through chakra or other means, and connecting yourself with nature, connecting yourself to the universe. Um, and this is a major part of training. This is not religion. You can be any religion that you choose to be and study at the Buddha Yu. This has nothing to do with Christianity or any other form of religion. This is spirituality. It's making what we call Bushi Ki. Bushi Ki means warrior spirit. It's making your warrior spirit stronger. Now people say, what is warrior spirit? You walk into a room and someone looks at you and they're like, yeah, that person... You know, that they size you up real quick and they know that you, you have a spirit about you that's very dominant, that's very um, enlightened, that's always happy. You know, you have a certain spirit about you and it exudes in everything that you do. You know, like you guys watch me, you go, I'm always happy, you know, and I'm always smiling and perky and I have, I I'm, probably exude sexuality in everything that I do and I'm, you know, that kind of thing. And it, there's a certain spirit about me that I feel very confident with. Every one of you guys have that in you too. Now, it might not be the same as mine. There might be a different spirit about you. It might not be the happy, happy and exuding sexuality all over the place. It might be something else. But whatever that spirit is that resides on the inside that needs to be expressed, that, that is Bushi Ki. That is warrior spirit. That's exuding that energy from you and connecting that to the nature and connecting that to the universe. And that itself is the fundamental practice of Seshi Teki Kyoyo, of spiritual refinement. It's learning who you are, learning how to make your spirit stronger and connecting yourself with nature and everything around you. The fifth section of the Buddha Ryugo Hono Keiko is called the Nihon Mushokyu. Now this means a study of the Japanese warrior. As many of you guys know, I've inherited lots of scrolls um, in my journey within the martial arts, but I'm also a collector. I've acquired lots of scrolls and Dinsho and Makimono throughout my journey as well. And in this journey of inheriting scrolls and acquiring scrolls and, and, and uh, historical references to the Japanese warrior, it's a love of mine to share that aspect with my students. Now, so what does that exactly mean? Does that mean, oh, we found a scroll, let's read it and do it? Not exactly. When we look at uh, ancient Densho and Makimono and things like that, there's so much lost in translation. For you just to read a scroll and be like, yep, I know the secrets, that is so ignorant and that is not how we look at it at all. Um, I will say that we study from the big three, uh, the, uh, the Shonin Ki, the Nipidin, and Bonsen Shukai. And um, in fact, in 2004, when I started the Budo Yu, the fundamental practice was to study from the Bonsen Shukai. When I was doing this, my sensei gave me a translation of the Bonsen Shukai. There were so many holes that was not explained. It's not even funny. And I was like, God, it's so hard to just be like, okay, the book says this, I do this. Because there's nowhere you can apply that in real life. Like, okay, this is how you climb up a castle wall. Okay. You know, why, why would we focus on making sure we can do that, you know, today, when we live in houses that don't have rock walls? So it's like, where, 
I want to make sure that my students understand authentic ninjutsu and, and traditional samurai bujutsu, but where does that actually fit in the curriculum? Do I take a day of their life, a whole day of somebody's life to say, today I'm, we're going to climb up a castle wall, or can we just implement that into the research training, in the Nihon Mushukyu, and have a day where maybe we talk about 15 to 20 things, whether it's a certain torch or climbing up a wall or whatever, and then focus on the things that actually can be applied in the modern day. That is what we tend to focus on. So when we talk about Nihon Mushikyu, that doesn't necessarily mean, okay, hey, here is the Nenpaden. Now we're going to go make this particular Nenki. That's not exactly what it means. What it is is reading old scrolls, Densho, Makimono, um, uh, such as the Nenpaden, the Bonsen Chukai, the Shonen Ki, and others, and then trying to get a better connection to what the samurai and ninja did, and then learn more about the warrior, researching the arts, get a better connection, a better connection to the past. That's the key. Now, in this area of Nio Mushikyu, this doesn't just stop at learning uh, the Bonsen Shikai or some specific scroll, okay? No, it's also learning more. We also look at uh, traditional dance. We look at geisha. We look at um, tea ceremony. We look at flower arranging. We look at calligraphy. All these traditional customs that are found in Japan at that time, we study that as well. But studying the traditional culture of Japan, I feel, is a very important aspect towards the training. I think it, under letting my students um, talking about the shonenki and looking at what was written by Natori Masataka, I think is a very important thing. Um, taking from it what we can apply in the modern day, and then learning about what the samurai and the ninja did in the past, there's a lot of great lessons that can be learned from that. Same thing with the Nimpudin, same thing with the Bonsen Chukai, same thing with many other ninja scrolls and samurai scrolls that I've acquired. And to me, there's a fine line between being kind of a historical LARPer, you know what I mean? Like a historical reenactor or a LARPer, and being a martial artist. Okay, I understand we have to wear the gi and we put the gi on and, and uh, because when you put on the gi, you know, just, just a gi, it's something that we don't wear every day. So when you put it on, you get a feeling of this feels different than my clothing. So it gives you a sense of focus, even with the touch of the skin. So I understand that there are certain things that you do in the practice of the dojo. However, I think that if you're going to study specific things. I don't think that you need to make, oh, I have to have, you know, 20 different types of hakama and all these different types of sandals and I'm going to make 80 different torches and I've got to have all these different tools and, uh, you know, I mean, once you go that route, to me, that's being a historical reenactor. You're kind of being a LARPer, you know. You know those people that do like, um, like Dungeons and Dragons and stuff like that in the woods, you know, I think it's goes that way real quick. So we don't go that far with it. What we do is we look at the old scrolls, we look at the historical text, um, whether it's, you know, like I said, Shonen Ki, Bonsen Shukai, Nipidin, whatever, and we read it and we study it. And then what can we get from it? What can we apply? And the rest of it is nothing but just knowledge that we can use as a connection to the past. And that's the way we look at it. We look at this section, this fifth section of the Nihon Mushukyu. We look at this section as nothing more or less than us trying to have a better understanding of what Japan was at that time, what the shinobi was, and what they thought and what they did at that time, what the samurai was and what they did and what they thought at that time. The more scrolls and dinsho that we get to research and, and read and, and understand, the better understanding that we have towards that past and towards that part of history. But that doesn't mean that we deviate from the other four areas of training. It just means that that's a part of what we do. So I hope that answers all of you guys' questions. I know it's the million dollar question. What is the Buddha to you? You know, um, and it, it's it's... It's not an easy thing to say because we do so much in our school. I can't just say, you know, oh, well, we teach these seven, these seven warrior traditions, and that's what the Buddha Ryu is. It's not. The Buddha Ryu is a school of traditional samurai, bujutsu, and authentic ninjutsu. Its focus is in ninjutsu. Within the Buddha Ryu, there's the Buddha Ryu Goho no Keiko, which is the five areas of training. So for the Thank you guys so much for all of your time. I um, hope I didn't talk to you guys' ear off too much, but I 
hopefully I answered your question as to what is the Budo Dio. So um, until next time, guys, take care, be safe. Good luck in your journey of Budo. Bye.